If you earn more than this, you earn more than half the people living in UK and US. And with this, you're definitely in the top 10%. And lucky enough to earn this, places you in the top 1% of earners in UK and US. But why should you care and why does it even matter? Well, first of all, know your worth. Because if you don't know it, how would the rest of the world know? So whether it's about starting a career or changing jobs, knowing these facts can really help you to maximize your pay. And when you're gonna go ask for an employer for a pay rise, saying I deserve it wouldn't justify it. Knowing these stats and figures will help you sit across the table and have a reasonable argument as to why you think you should be getting paid more. And comparison is the root of all evil and we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to other people, but we're human beings. So every now and then we can't help but take a sneak peek at the next person's pay slips. So let's dig into these facts, but before doing so, please do subscribe. I am going to attach a few links in the description with a few wonderful calculators and facts that you can read more in your spare time, including a bonus calculator, which will tell you where you rank against the rest of the world. So whether you're a single individual or a couple or a family with one child or two, pop in your particular circumstances in that calculator, pop in your income, and it would tell you where you stand against the rest of the world. And I can assure you, most of you will be pleasantly surprised. Let's dig into some of these facts and figures first, and also understand the pay by sectors later. If you earn over 27,000 pounds a year in the UK, you earn what is called a median wage. And what median means here is that if I took all the earners in the UK and line them up side by side, you'll be bang in the middle. Which means half the UK earns more than you and the remaining half earns less than you. And if you earn roughly 64,000 pounds a year, you're in the top 10% earners in the UK. And with 181,000 pounds a year, you're in the top 1%. If you live in the US and earn $54,000 a year, you earn the median wage gain, which means half the US earns more than you and the remaining half earns less than you. And if you earn over $167,000 a year, you're in the top 10%. And lucky enough to earn $819,000 a year puts you in the top 1% in the US. Straight away it tells us the average living standard in the US is quite higher than the UK, and the average wage is higher, naturally. All the biggest tech companies in the world, the richest entrepreneurs, are based mostly out of the US, dragging up the average wages and the average pay. In the next section, let's cover how these wages are split by sectors and which sector gets paid what. Now let's try to understand some facts and figures around sector pay and see what's going on and which sector pay is better than the other, both for UK and for US. For the UK, we're going to use a website called ons.gov.uk, which is Office of National Statistics, a government-backed agency, which looks at stats across the UK for multiple things. What we're trying to do here is try to compare the sector pay against this blue line in the middle, running from top to bottom, which is the median pay of £27,000 a year, or £2,300 a month, as we discussed before. It's very clear that the financial insurance sector handsomely pays above the median wage. So does the information, communication, professional, scientific and technical, public administration, defence and manufacturing which clearly means that professional services or degree educated people will get paid more than people who are in different kinds of jobs. Very telling fact as to how your education impacts your ability to earn money in a normal situation. There will always be outliers where people are earning a wage that is completely outside their sector or their profession, but generally what this indicates is the professional services sectors are getting paid a lot more than the average UK person. And if we now flip over to the US side, it is actually quite similar story there with professional sectors, management, law, computer and math, getting paid the highest amount of wage, but with one clear exception, and that is healthcare. Healthcare is privatizing US in comparison to UK. Therefore, doctors, dentists, and health professionals on the average get paid a lot more than they get paid in the UK. 
And the other interesting thing is that the overall pay by sector in US is also quite higher than in UK. Very interesting story here again. Now let's understand how the pay market has moved in comparison to inflation over the last year or so. Let's look at the UK data first. Looking at ons.gov.uk again, what we can see is that the average pay has moved about 7 to 8% over the last year. Pretty much in line or slightly above inflation, which is great news for the UK labor market. The question for you to ask is, are you in line with this movement or not? And heading over to US gives a similar story. On the average, the pay in US has also moved in excess of 5% a year or so. Question for you again, are you in line with this or not? So I guess I'm going to sum up this video with four key things. Number one, do you know your worth? And are you getting paid what you're worth? Number two, in your sector, where do you stand against your pair group? Number three, over the last year or so, did you manage to receive a pay rise in line with inflation? Or is there something that you should be exploring more? And number four, are there steps beyond the above three which you could be taking to increase your pay? For example, if you're working in HR or finance in the retail industry, you could potentially look at moving to HR in the finance industry to increase your pay, because the finance industry generally pays more than the other industries. Hope you enjoyed the content of this video. For more content like this, stay tuned.